Greetings and salutations, friends. My name is, of course, Charles Quasar Banks, and I'd like to welcome you back to another video on why I think the AAA dev industry cannot be expected to make great games. Um, recently, I made a video, the last discussion video I made, um, on the subject of why I thought that AAA game criticism on the internet right now is far too harsh for this very reason. Um, the fact is, game developers in the AAA sphere have not been making as high quality games for the sake of fun, for the priority of gameplay and story, as games have been in the past 20 years. This, I think, is objectively true, in spite of the fact that there have been very many good AAA games coming out. But we have seen recently, especially, that AAA games don't necessarily have that seal of approval or quality that people have expected from it, or have come to expect from it, especially due to the early 2000s. The mid-2000s, late 2000s, have caused people to expect great things, because games like Halo, Diablo 2, um, came out in the 2000s, uh, World of Warcraft, um, all of these were made, Starcraft uh, 2, Starcraft 3, these were made in the 2000s and and early 2010s by AAA game devs. And the problem is those same game devs have um, been dropping the ball recently. Blizzard, the creators of World of Warcraft, Diablo, have uh, made games recently like Diablo 4 that have been getting very bad Metacritic ratings by the audience. Um, and not necessarily by critics, but by audience critiques which is interesting. Um, we can talk about that, the difference between Metacritic audience and critic uh, critiques, and why they're so disparate. Um, but I think for at least Diablo 4, I personally have enjoyed it. But most people who were critical of the game played it for many more hours than the simple storyline and most critics only played the storyline and gave a bit of a critique on that. And I think that's the same thing with most other games. Most gamers are willing to play a game far beyond uh, the simply entry level of the game. The simple entry level of the game. Whereas most reviewers have to try and get their reviews out as quickly as possible. So, not only Diablo 4 has been getting bad reviews because the endgame is almost non-existent past a certain point, which I definitely have run into myself. I'm at level 73 or 74 on my Necromancer, seasonal Necromancer, and it is like pulling teeth trying to get new levels, which does discourage me from trying harder to go through it um, to get to level 100, but I still want to do it because I'm still enjoying the game. And that is what matters to me, and I think that's what should matter to anyone. Are you still enjoying the game? Yes or no? Uh, and if you are still enjoying the game, despite all of the flaws that you could list, that is more of a priority than just pooping all over the game should be. And if you are not enjoying it as much as you feel you ought to, then you should stop playing it, and maybe you can complain about it online. But I will say that gaming development critique, as well as just the critical reception of games, especially by the audience, has become incredibly, um, just in, in increasingly polarized, where you either hate the game and the game is bad, or you love the game and the game is, is great. Uh, and there is no middle ground. Same thing with Starfield recently. You see uh, both uh, in in each game. And I, I said that in the last uh, video as well. So I hope I'm not repeating myself too much. I did that a lot in the last video. And I think because of it, I kind of lost the plot. Which was that AAA games devs are really bad at making games right now. And especially the ones that are making bad games. And everyone knows what they are. Um, but that this is not a problem just with the AAA gaming development community, it is with 
all devs. The fact is, it is very difficult to create a good game that focuses on gameplay, and it is even harder to do so when you have a massive studio with lots of cooks in the kitchen. Because guess what? When when double A game devs or trip or single A game devs, indie game devs, go from single A to triple A, they usually become more and more greedy. Let's just be honest and expect more of themselves because they've been able to make that jump. It is very difficult to hold your composure when you have made a game that is blown up so much that you can actually have your own gaming studio that is with hundreds of people in it, or dozens of people in it. And so it is very difficult for people to not become arrogant and not become greedy in that situation, and which is why massive landfalls of money are generally bad for whoever gets the money. And I think this this gets to uh, the point as to why I make, I'm making this video, not only to clarify what I said in the last one, but because recently I received a, a very interesting, uh, to me, interesting um, little comment on one of my videos, which I wanted to get to because I think it is it is it gets to the crux of the argument and I'm very grateful for the person who wrote the comment because it inspired me making this video so recently on my last video which I'll put a card to um, <clears throat> Bobby I'll just say Bobby uh, said on my video titled AAA criticism is too harsh quote unquote Charles rambles ponderously. Um, Bobby says, I have to disagree. These are AAA game developers who have the resources and the manpower most indie developers would dream to have. They have everything they need to make something amazing. But yet, they don't. Either through complacency, ego, or sheer incompetence, they just don't. I agree with that. And it's not like they can't. I agree with that as well. Many of these AAA developers have made great games in the past, so of course we expect better from them, because they have done better. That is true. Not for all, but <laughs> as I'll get to, not for all. You saying that people shouldn't complain because it's still fun is like telling someone to not be upset that the food got spoiled because some of it is still edible. Sure, you can still eat it, but it won't be as nutritious or as good to eat. It might even taste god-awful. We should judge and complain because we should in all caps, we should judge and complain because they've proven they've made great games in the past. If we can have great games from developers with half the manpower and nowhere near as much money, then these AAA developers have zero excuse. I agree with that as well. There is no excuse. However, however, it is on them. Okay, I'll, I'll finish the whole comment. In the end, saying we shouldn't complain is not something to preach. That's just settling for less. And I like this guy, because he does care about the, the AAA gaming industry and he wants it to be better. But I think it's kind of missing the point. Um, and there are some things that I, I disagree with entirely. Not, not many, really. I, I, I agree with most of this. I do think we should be very critical of the AAA game industry, but no more critical than we ought to be on anyone else. The fact that they have more money the fact that they have bigger companies just means that they can fail easier. The fact that a, tri the, a single A developer has very little money, very little people, very few people on the project means that they have complete control over the vision, over the execution of said video game, whether they have lots of money or little. If they are an indie developer, they are completely in control of and efficient with what they are creating. And so, for us to expect that a game will be fun, no matter what, if it's a AAA game, is just erroneous. Not only because um, there are people, human beings, which are flawed, all human beings are flawed, and create mistakes, more so than a computer, in which you have a certain goal, a very deterministic thing. You put into the computer what you want to get out of it, and it comes out. You tell a person you want something, you tell them to go to McDonald's, <laughs> let's say, and they go to McDonald's, and you tell them exactly what to get, and they come home with three different things that are close, but not the same as what you ordered. And 
multiply that by the number of people in a company, and you have so many points of failure along the way that could happen, which is why many of the AAA games that we find these days are either extremely broken, unoptimized, um, not a very cohesive story, not a cohesive whole, um, the gameplay is all over the place sometimes, but with all AAA video games, well, again, I'm not going to say all anymore because Gollum has come out, but almost all AAA video games have a certain rubric for what is expected of a AAA video game and its graphics. The graphics are almost always focusing on a hyper-realistic art style because art style is objective if it is based in realism. And it is very easy to judge whether or not the art style is is good if it's realistic, if the art is well made, because you can just say, this is a picture of a gun. Here is a picture of a gun in the video game. Which, how does it look realistic? Yes or no. Uh, this is how it looks unrealistic, this is how it's different. You can, you can make those judgments objectively based on the metric of the realistic standard of life, of, of the world. You can look outside and see what the landscape looks like. You can look in a game and see what the landscape looks like. And if the game looks similar to life, that's impressive because it is very difficult to make something realistic. And so we, we tend to value realism in art because it is hard to do and it has an objective standard. With other art styles, it is, it is a lot more subjective. It is a lot more based on what you are trying to make, what you are trying to say, uh, how, how you would like it to look and how people interpret certain shapes and things to look, and it can look interesting. It doesn't look realistic, but can still look good. You can still mess that up, of course, but it's way easier to mess up um, realism. So, for AAA games to come out with excellent graphics, at least visually, and terribly optimized, or <laughs> with very little endgame, or very short, is, is par for the course these days, because as long as you have excellent visuals, most people are not going to complain too much. Um, you do have to have a certain amount of enjoyment of gameplay, but what the standard is for gameplay is much harder to discern. First-person shooters, for instance, are easy to discern because Call of Duty has created the standard, and it is very difficult to try and top that because it's just so simple, so straightforward. Um, so. Uh, just all that to say. Um, AAA games all have great, generally, are expected to have great graphics. Everything else is on a sliding scale, and it is very hard for anyone to get everything right. If you're expected to have great graphics, uh, and you don't, and you're a AAA video game, that is probably the, the most obvious point of contention that people draw out immediately. Why doesn't this game look as good as the last video game that came out? Why doesn't it look better? Why doesn't it look ten times better? Why it's in Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine 5 is coming out. 5.3 is coming out. Why doesn't it look good as that? And people get all out of sorts for that. So there's this incredibly high standard for graphics, but there is really no way to quantify great gameplay objectively outside of comparing it to other games in the genre, and if it's too much like another game in the genre, then it's destined to fail as well, because people will say, oh, it's just ripping off this other game. So, there are many ways in which AAA games can fail, or become less good, or have issues, and it is very worthwhile to call out all of those issues. But if you're going to call out all of those issues, you have to be clear and concise and realistic and actually talk about the good things that every AAA game has done. If you don't, that is called bias, and bias is an error. Bias is a mistake because it does not give the full picture. If you're only giving half the picture, you are not giving the full picture, and that is what people need in order to have good perspective, and I love Luke Stevens' videos because while I do disagree with some of his takes, such as that graphical performance is, like, tantamount to the quality of the game by 
three or four points out of a, an out of ten metric. I, I disagree with that entirely. I don't think that graphics really matter that much, and I think performance, while it matters much more, does not matter half as much as people, um, at least Luke Stevens, thinks it does. Now, that's my opinion. You may disagree with me on that, because performance is very important. But I've, I love Bloodborne. I loved Bloodborne before it was fixed. Uh, on the day one patch and had to sit through those 30 second to a minute load screens and I was fine with that. I was perfectly okay with that because the game was so stinking good and that is also something that um, comes out in this conversation which is when people love a game they are willing to overlook its issues and I do not believe that you can make a similitude between bad food, rotten food, and somewhat partially bad games. Like, if you eat rotten food, you're going to get sick, right? Any piece of rotten food, even if it's a small bit, but most of it is okay, you're still going to have bacteria being eaten. It is bad for you. Playing a bad game is not bad for you, okay? <laughs> Let's just make that clear. Not that that's, a, 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 like, a bad point to make, but it is a bad similitude because if there is half of a game that is bad and half of a game that is good, you can still enjoy the half that you enjoy. And the amount that you enjoy the half that you enjoy determines how you feel about that game. That is very subjective, but that is the truth. And there is no way to make an objective rubric of all games. This is good, this is bad. You can't. You cannot. Because everyone is going to have a different experience with it, everyone is going to have a different background coming from games, everyone is going to have different desires, and I've talked to people for whom Anthem was their favorite video game. Anthem, the most broken, glitchy, predatorily microtransacted piece of crap game that EA made up till that point. And probably has ever made, um, now that I think about it. Although you can definitely uh, tell me in the comments below of other worse games that EA has made, because it's very fun to, to crap all over them. However, I played uh, Anthem myself some a year ago or two, and uh, for $5, because it was on that big of a sale, it probably still is, and I loved it. Oh, alarm went off. Excuse me. Uh, it's 8.30 a.m. where I am. Anyway, Anthem. I played Anthem, and I enjoyed every moment that it worked. <laughs> Alright? I played it, probably, I tried to play it, eight hours a day, five days a week, on stream, because I stream at Twitch, Charles Q. Banks, at twitch.tv forward slash Charles Q. Banks. Follow me there. But, I played it on Twitch, and it would crash between every two hours and every five hours every day, every time that I would play it. Sometimes multiple times I would play it. And uh, the graphics definitely did not always work correctly. The lighting would shift in and out. Um, enemies would just disappear, fly up into the air even though they're grounded targets. It, all kinds of things happened. Uh, sometimes I would fly and then the screen would just go white and it would not come back. Uh, and I would have to reset the game. In the middle of a quest, by the way, and so all of my, you know, save data during that quest would be destroyed. However, the actual gameplay of Anthem is comparable to the amount of enjoyment that I'm, I've been getting out of an actually good game, a uh, fully good game. I don't have almost any complaints, especially in terms of optimization and performance, of Armored Core. Armored Core is a mech game, you shoot things, you fly around, Anthem, you have a mech, you shoot things, you fly around. It's very much more a skill-based game, but I was having a great time shooting things in Anthem. The visuals, when they were working, looked great. The hit, stun, the action. My point is, you cannot make a hard and fast rule for what is and what is not a good game. You can say for you how much you have enjoyed or how, how much you have disliked a game, and you can bring out all of the objective reasons for why you would like or dislike the game, and all the sub subjective reasons why someone, uh, why you would, uh, or objective for someone, why someone else would. Um, and 
I would agree with you. I would say, okay, I agree, you know, that, that game, Anthem, has terrible optimization, does not have an actual end game of any merit or value. Um, continuing to grind after the, <laughs> the campaign is over is almost worthless, unless you just want to, unless you enjoy it enough to where you want to actually grind for the cosmetics. And they still have microtransactions in them, by the way. You still have to pay money for microtransactions. It's always online. Uh, they're probably going to, you know, take it offline soon. But either way, um, obviously, Anthem had a very troubled development cycle. And many other games have had troubled development cycles, even though everything should have gone right. Even though it had the right visionary director or lead, even though it had hundreds of people working on it, millions of billions of dollars behind the company. But this is a truth that everyone needs to accept, that big budget, big company does not quality make. It does not. Even in terms of graphics, um, Gollum was a game made by Daedalic Studios, well known for their point-and-click adventure games. Um, so, I, you know, they made m lots of money off of those, although all of those games, I would say, basically were indie games, um, or basically had a very low popularity, but there is a definite niche for point-and-click adventure games, and they had that niche uh, down. And so when they were called upon to, uh, or, or I don't know who came up with the idea, <laughs> But Lord of the Rings Gollum uh, to come out, but that game was, you know, it got trailers and people were like, "Why? Who wants this?" And then it got gameplay trailers and people thought, "Why? This is a PlayStation One looking game. Like seriously, this game looks worse than some PlayStation Two games. Sometimes better than PS One, but it probably runs worse." Um, and it came out, and guess what? It tanked. It did terribly. People were buying it, but not many, you know, not not enough people bought it. And uh, so they, they had to apologize. Not only was the game terribly broken from the start, certain quests just not being able to be completed, people being soft-locked, hard-locked, people getting uh, freezing. Why? Why? Excuse me. Alarms. I want my attention. Um... <laughs> I think I'll keep those in, because it's just funny. Um, but yes, Gollum. Terrible game, not only in graphics and optimization and performance, but also in graphical quality and fidelity. Even though Nacon, a very well-known uh, AAA publisher, published the game. So this uh, debatably single-A indie developer, perhaps you could say they were a double-A developer before, gets given all that they need, according to Bobby. Um, manpower, resources, any indie dev would dream to have. That actually happened. And guess what? They dropped it like a rock, not only because I think it was a terrible idea, but also they just did not have the experience to do it. Is it reasonable for them to have dropped it that hard? Probably, because they'd never worked on a stealth game before. But. The fact is, it's a terrible game, and I don't think any self-respecting person would be willing to put out that pile of crap. Um, again, it's just a bad PS1 game that came out in 2023, <laughs> and, and it's pathetic. <laughs> it's absolutely pathetic. I, I feel, I, I do feel pity for those who made it, but I also just wonder what was going through their heads. How could they, how could the parent company how could Nacon actually publish this without, you know, either shuttering it or forcing them to rework it? I have no idea. I think they just expected that, oh, it's Lord of the Rings. People love Lord of the Rings. Oh, you, you remember Gollum? You know, my precious. You know, everyone knows the meme. Uh, no, it didn't. It didn't work. So, uh, problem is, and this is this is something very general that I would like to say. Uh, a general statement is, you cannot expect any developer, AAA or otherwise, to come out with a game you like consistently. You cannot expect that of them, because there will be a time, due to human error, due to an attempt at creativity, that 
a developer that you like will come out with something that you dislike. And there are many examples of that. CD Projekt Red making three of the most well-known and most popular open-world games of all time. The Witcher series, especially Witcher 3, and then they came out with uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Is that it? 2049? There are too many Cyberpunk-style things with different numbers. Uh, but Cyberpunk comes out and it is a buggy, glitchy mess with about a, you know, a quarter of, of, I would say fairly, a quarter of its content that was promised missing. And people hated it. It was fun to me, Mom. Uh, it definitely got a lot of negative criticism. But there were still people coming out of the woodwork here and there, maybe a third or less of the population, but still a good third, uh, saying that the game was great, as is, that the game diff definitely had issues with its graphics and performance, but they could still play the game, and they were still enjoying it for what it was. And you cannot put those people off and say, oh, those are just coping, oh, they're just insane. No. You have to believe them based on what they are saying. You cannot just assume people are lying because they are stubborn and don't want to uh, say that, that they're playing a, a bad game. No, it's like, maybe to you it's a bad game, but maybe, just maybe, it's, it's up to you how you enjoy the game. Um, anyway. That's, that's mainly what I have to say. I, I and, and here's the other side of the story. No Man's Sky, indie dev game, great vision, great purpose, has the same issue. Which is, they praised it to the skies, they said we can do this, 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 and this. Small, I don't know, less than 30 man studio making No Man's Sky. And of course they didn't deliver. And it was buggy and glitchy. And... People were shocked that it didn't have all of the content, or even half of the content, that it was promising. And yet today it's a great game, apparently, with m most, if not all, of the promises fulfilled. So, what do you do with that? You say, well, they're not. A, they're still not a AAA indie dev studio. I mean, they're, they're not a AAA studio, they're still an indie dev studio. Uh, they, and they're still making No Man's Sky and updating it, and free updates, by the, by the way. Um, same cannot be said of Fallout 76, which, made by Bethesda, has also been updated many times, and is still broken and buggy. Uh, and the, I think another point that is being brought up by Bobby is that there are many, many game devs that should be making something better. And I'm not saying that they they couldn't, that they can't, that we shouldn't complain. We should complain when we see something that is true, uh, a problem that needs to be resolved. We should speak it out. Not out of a mean spirit, though. Not out of trying to sink the, the ship of the company because the game that I bought isn't quite as well optimized as I would like or doesn't have all the content that they said it would. Because it's it's not, you know, it, it doesn't save uh, the video game industry for us to constantly harp on every single uh, AAA game that comes out. If every AAA game that came out that uh, had bad performance on launch uh, got boycotted and nobody bought it, uh, it still would not sink the AAA studio, I don't think. Because there would still be people that would buy it, uh, and would not care, and would enjoy themselves. That's that's the truth of the matter. And in that kind of vein, I just wanted to, to give you a little bit of uh, perspective on a Reddit page that has a lot of the same topic here that I want to bring across, so one moment please. Okay, here we have an article on Reddit. Article? Do you call them articles? I don't use Reddit much. <laughs> R slash game design, designing rule sets for interactive entertainment. So this is mostly 
indie devs, I believe, or just developers talking about game development, and the, the title is, Do you think, with all the mistakes AAA developers are making in recent years, that we as indie devs have an opportunity to be more successful as people give up on the mainstream? That's a, it's a great topic, and I think that's part of what uh, Bobby and I are talking about. Part of me says it will, part of me says it'll never change. Don't care what people say, care what they do. Sure, they criticize AAA games a lot, but they still buy them. Yes. Well, and I think criticizing what people do is also wrong, because... Why would you criticize what someone enjoys? Unless it is immoral. Is it immoral to enjoy Diablo 4 because it has microtransactions? I don't think so. Now, if you partake in said microtransactions, and you are spending far too much and you get addicted and your life falls apart because of it, I can, I can critique you then and say, you need conviction, you need to be, you know, saved out of this horrible microtransaction addiction. But barring that, anyone can enjoy anything when it comes to video games, and uh, in terms of quality, nobody cares except for the people who do care, which I think is the point, that there are people who care, there are people who don't. Um, people, And this is another thing, Duck Roland says, the people criticizing AAA games are people who play a lot of video games, though. They go and seek out games they want to play, read lots of recommendations and forums just like this subreddit, carefully watch for signs of BS, and generally ignore marketing. Most people just watch a trailer for the latest Assassin's Creed or Battlefield and think it's awesome and then go buy it. It's probably one of only a few games they own. They're impressed by flashy graphics and have no idea that the gameplay could be better. Or maybe they actually like it, same way lots of people enjoy McDonald's food, and there's way more of them. It's different crowds, IMO, and I totally agree with this take. Uh, you can be a five-star chef and enjoy McDonald's. You can. It, it is possible. You know there are better things. You know how to make better things. You know they shouldn't be making as bad things as they are, but it's still enjoyable to a certain extent. Next person says, that's what I'm thinking too. Even the biggest scandals seem to blow over in a week. And yes, that is a whole other situation that <laughs> is a massive problem. Uh, and someone says, what scandals are you referring to? Are we talking game scandals, predatory MTX, rampant hacking, server stability, etc., or studio-centric scandals, sexual degeneracy, garbage work culture, etc.? Question mark. Both, honestly. And Verve says, it's surprising to me that you think indies are immune to any of the things outlined above. And this is my point exactly. Alec Haulauka's Night in the Woods, Aquaria, Harassment of Women, and Ultimate suicide when it came out. I don't mind talking about it. I'm not monetized. Notches, Minecraft, rampant bigotry and online harassment of a ton of women, which is documented pretty much everywhere. Coverex's Factorio, rampant bigotry. Steve Gaynor's Gone Home, treatment of women in dev. Now, I cannot speak to all, <laughs> really, any of those. They are indie games, which I'm not aware of, mostly. <laughs> uh, you know, there are millions of indie games out there, and out of all of the millions, you know, you know in the heart of you that most people are not good people. They are not. And they will do bad things if given the opportunity, even indie devs. They are not immune. And this person continue, continues along that line. These aren't some people. These are actual legends of indie development, and not in small amounts. There are few people that hold as much indie prestige as the above. Don't even get me started about server instability or hacking. Like, really, you think indies are immune to this? This is not a AAA or indie thing. It's about being better as an industry. It's about being better as a dev. And that is, I think, where I can kind of, you know leave off on this topic and end this video. The point is, there are going to be good AAA games. There have been good AAA games recently in the form of from anything from software puts out generally, although even them I distrust because Sekiro I did not enjoy. It's not that it was a bad game, it's not that it had bad graphics, it's not that it had bad performance, I just didn't enjoy it. And that's another issue. You can have a perfect game. I would say Sekiro is closest as can be to a perfect video game for what it's trying to do. The graphics, the performance, the art style, the gameplay. It's perfect. It is what it is, and it is trying for a very specific niche, and it's perfect in that niche. And I hated it. 
I could not enjoy one moment of it after uh, the first four hours when I realized what I was getting myself into, I could not enjoy it. And so that's the problem, is that even a broken, buggy game someone will enjoy, and even a perfect game some people will hate, uh, unfortunately. And also, another AAA game by EA, again, they made Jedi Fallen Order, excellent uh, Souls-like Metroidvania-style action-adventure game with a very linear progression and storyline um, that, you know, by all rubrics should have failed because people hated EA and the last Star Wars game they made was uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 which, you know, that fiasco microtransaction predatory predatory loot boxes microtransactions out the wazoo and pay to win mechanics based on those loot boxes. You had to get into the loot boxes in order to get more powerful cards in order to make yourself more powerful so that you could win more easily. And uh, literal governments had to get involved in, in Europe to try and stop people or, or look into whether or not they should uh, keep Battlefront 2 from going on the market or sue EA. And uh, props to those people who, who tried to sue, by the way. That's pretty amazing. And uh, however, Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor have both gotten incredibly good metric scores. However, Sur Jedi Survivor, created by the same people who made the great game Jedi Fallen Order, which was not broken and buggy at launch, even more broken and buddy buggy at launch with the sequel. How does that happen? I will tell you, it's human error. It's just, it's just the way it goes sometimes, man. There is no way to uh, to excuse it, and there is no way to expect it, and there is all we can do is say, well, they screwed up, and move along because the game is great if it's not broken and buggy all the time, and that that definitely docks off some points maybe. But why why are we playing games? Is it for the graphics and performance? Is it for the uh, I don't know, the clout of, of playing a game that's better than a game someone else is playing? We shouldn't be. We should not be criticizing others for the games they play, and we should not be, I don't know, living off of this kind of false reality where every AAA game that comes out is to be held to this massive standard of, of, uh, of excellence, because people are people, and maybe they should be able to, with their massive money, make something great, but the, but the point is indie games can be more fun than AAA games and there are some AAA games that are more fun than indie games and it's up to you to find them. And I, I do believe that this this Redditor is correct uh, in, in his espousals that um, the people who do criticize AAA games are those who play a lot of games, who go out of their way to read lots of recommendations in forums, watch gameplay, and ignore marketing. I'm not saying we should ignore mar marketing, I'm saying that we should do what this person says. Every gamer should be discerning, and every person who buys anything with their money should be discerning with what they buy. And if you don't want glitchy, buggy games, you should not expect a non-glitchy, non-buggy game from AAA devs, especially ones who have made glitchy buggy games in the past. Even those who haven't, CD Projekt Red, an excellent example. They expected too much of themselves because they made great games that were not glitchy and buggy in the past, even though they partially were in, in some small ways. And then Cyberpunk was a glitchy buggy mess because the development was harried and they didn't know what they were doing. In so. We just have to throw up our hands and say we cannot expect anything of anyone. We just have to be thankful for when a game is not glitchy and bu buggy and do our best to find out which ones are and are not. And enjoy those games that we do enjoy. So, with that, thank you all so much for watching. God bless you fairly well and remember, the good lord loves you. And so do I. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Like, comment, and subscribe. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>